YouTube, what's good? It's your boy Ari. Welcome back. Today we're gonna to be reacting to B One M. The city is wait, wait, wait. This city is the next Singapore. All right, if you guys are new to the channel, smash the like button, subscribe, comment down below. Let's get into it. This isn't a forest. This isn't a temple. This is an airport, and it could change the fate of an entire country. At least that's what the government and the architects are hoping for. It's located here, on the outskirts of Phnom Penh, the capital of Cambodia. Now, Cambodia is a country full of natural beauty and rich culture, but it's also been marred by civil wars, violence and extreme poverty. Fortunately, that is all beginning to change. Cambodia is now the fastest growing economy in Southeast Asia and the third fastest in Asia overall. The nation's capital has now set its sights on becoming a major player in the region and it's all starting with this 1.2 billion US dollar new airport. So how can we reinvent a whole country you might ask? Well, it's been done before, quite a few times. Shouts out to Cambodia. Now, clearly, this is not just your average airport. Nope. It's breathtaking. Look fancy. Before we talk about what it wants to achieve, we're going to talk to you a bit about how it was built. The first thing you notice is this canopy that's meant to resemble the jungles of Cambodia. There are trunks that reach up and shield visitors from the sun with their branches. Instead of leaves, steel blossoms outward, forming a screen that filters the light. It also references the country's vernacular architectural style, like these thatch roofs made from sugar palms. The canopy borrows cooling techniques from those designs as well. These traditional huts use two indigenous methods of ventilation to keep cool. The first, stack ventilation, is where cool air enters through the lower part of a building and pushes hot air up and out through gaps in the roof. The second is cross ventilation, which achieves the same effect but through gaps between the roof and the walls. The cool air in effect pushes the hot air out. Now, temperatures in Phnom Penh frequently rise as high as 40 degrees Celsius. I was going to say, it's not like that bitch don't get so no AC. Keeping cool is a must. By borrowing from these natural cooling techniques, the airport won't have to rely on as much air conditioning, the cardinal sin of most of our modern glass and stainless steel structures. Instead of using sugar palms, the canopy is made of a lightweight steel grid shell supported by structural trees that span 36 meters. This single canopy covers the entire airport. These artificial trees effectively scale the concept of stack and cross See, I don't like that shit because it can be dusty, hot, sticky. Ugh. Ventilation, using cool air that enters through openings to push the hot air out of the terminal. That's the canopy is always. made of a cross hatch material that filters the harsh summer sun while lighting the vast airport. The interior building appears different as the sun moves throughout the day, and it's beautiful. What about nighttime? It's an incredible example of how light can be used to elevate a space. This isn't just an airport. It's a gateway to an entire country. Oh, look at the, the terminal will be flush with trees and greenery throughout, and they'll play their own role in keeping the building cool as plants release water vapor through their leaves. In fact, this airport has aims to be one of the greenest in the world. It'll be run almost entirely on energy generated from on-site solar panels. Okay. This massive open space is where all the passenger processing, security and immigration, and shops are going to be. Stretching out from the main building are piers where the terminals are going to sit. They're aerofoil shaped like an enormous boomerang or aeroplane wing so as to optimize walking distances. Construction works here are well on the way to completing, but this is only phase one. Before we more. tell you about the rest of Cambodia's 25 year master plan for this airport, we need to talk about today's video <laughs> sponsor. These days. Okay, you're not paying me. Yeah, put some money in my pocket and get the sponsor. To try Udu for. Okay. Detail on where things are heading. Once finished, phase one is going to allow the airport to accommodate between 13 and 15 million passengers and around 175,000 tons of cargo each year. Let's It'll go. be F4 class, the highest in the class of an airport. This means it can accommodate large aircraft with extensive requirements, like runways over 3,000 meters in length, suitable for the biggest passenger and cargo planes. Phase two will expand the airport, adding a second aerofoil wing to the terminal by 2030 and increasing passenger capacity up to 30 million. There's space for this second pier to be constructed on the other side of the building. Now, the airport's being built on a 2,600 oh. hectare site in the southern Kandal and Takao provinces, about 20 kilometers from the capital Phnom Penh, so there's loads of space to expand. 
A third and final phase will see the airport grow its capacity to 50 million passengers by 2050, making it comparable to the roughly 42 million passengers who use Singapore's Changi Airport each year. Now, that comparison is important because it reveals Cambodia's endgame. The phrase second Singapore is thrown around a lot. Singapore is the economic miracle of Southeast Asia. Despite its lack of natural resources and small size, the country is the most prosperous in the region. It wasn't that long ago that Singapore was a relatively poor country and Phnom Penh was considered the jewel of Asia. Singapore's first Prime Minister reportedly said, I hope one day my city will look like this, when visiting Phnom Penh in 1967. Fast forward to today, and Singapore is thriving. Damn! Thanks to low taxes, that's not that a long, you know. reputation, and a strategically placed international airport that's opened up the city to the world. Singapore is located here, almost exactly in the middle of Southeast Asia. Thanks to this, Changi Airport is one of the largest transportation hubs on the planet. It sees roughly half a million flights every year from a hundred different airlines, all travelling to destinations in Asia, Australia, Africa, Europe, the Middle East and North America. The airport famously contains an eight-acre garden complete with the world's tallest indoor waterfall. That's this five-storey forest is entirely encased in a 144,000 square that foot so steel and glass donut structure. You can see where Teco International Airport gets its inspiration from. In many ways, Singapore really does connect the world, and you should never underestimate the power of connection to fuel an economy. In fact, it's a model Dubai closely followed with its own international airport, again positioned strategically between Europe, Asia and Africa. Dubai too has used its airport to diversify its economy, attract tourism and boost trade. By 2014, this aviation hub had created over 400,000 jobs That's what a bad is that, Dubai! And Six billion US dollars to the economy. That alone accounted for 27% of Dubai's entire GDP. Ah. Both of these cities used their airports as connectors between opposite sides of the globe. They boosted trade and increased tourism, I go to Dubai. both things that are driving Cambodia's economic research. It's illustrated in the massive boom Cambodia's Air aviation flat. industry is currently experiencing. The country's three international airports have received more than 3 million passengers combined in the first half of this year alone. That's a 22% increase from the same time last year. The country's aviation authorities predict the industry could grow by a remarkable 67% from pre-pandemic levels in 2019. To help move things along, this country has been implementing an open sky policy. It's an initiative that aims to bring in more international airlines by reducing restrictions on air traffic rights, increasing the number of flights, and allowing more freedom okay. for airlines to choose their routes and frequencies. It's been a key part of helping Cambodia grow its air traffic, boosting tourism and trade as well. Cambodia. The rest of the world wants to be in business why I'm with Cambodia, Cambodia in and Cambodia needs an airport to match. This airport, while looking spectacular and taking advantage- Hey, let me know down below if Cambodia got bad bitches. Yeah, bad bitches that will increase probably in tourism. It's yeah, ingenious much. design solutions also has the capacity to expand as Phnom Penh does. We've seen it time and again, whether it's Dubai or Singapore, infrastructure really does facilitate growth. While a single building can't change the face of a country, it can push it towards its destiny. This video was sponsored by Udu. Yeah, I'm back to this Udu shit. Well, that's the end of this hot, is it? Com. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to... Yeah, that's all. Um, Cambodia. Get my attention. I never thought about... Like, I, I don't know why Cambodia... I thought Cambodia was in Africa. I didn't realize it was in Asia. I don't know, but... Yeah, no. Interesting. But if you guys are new to the channel, smash that like button. Subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys want to see me react to. And I'm out. Peace.